Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to make a spline-based wall out of individual bricks. So you can easily make a cinder block wall like this one, or a block made out of stones like this one. And this wall will also conform pretty well to hills, as long as you don't get too steep. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll start with a blueprint, bp underscore wall, and a pcg, pcg underscore wall. In the blueprint, I'm going to add a spline component, and a pcg. Compile and save that, close it out, and let's add it to the world. And we can make the spline a little bigger. Don't modify the spline on the z-axis. That's going to cause some troubles, and I'll show you why later. All right, in the PCG, I'm going to get spline data, and leave it set to self, because the spline is in the same graph as the PCG, and a spline sampler. In the spline sampler, I'm going to set to distance on spline. I'll leave it at 100 for now. And let's add a static mesh spawner. I'm just using these concrete bricks that I downloaded off of Quixel Bridge. And I'll go ahead and set collision to no collision. so it's not spawned because we need to assign the PCG in the blueprint. PCG underscore wall, compile and save that. And there we go, now we have some bricks. So what we need to do is every other brick I want to be up a layer, and that will give me the nice multi-layered brick effect. So... If you look at this spline sampler, every other one is an odd number on the index. So what I can do is divide index, well, mod index, using a modulo function, by 2. So I'm just creating this attribute 2, plugging into the mod function and setting the mod to dollar $index. And I will call this out put index mod and now if I inspect this I see index mod goes from 0 to 1 so all I have to take is a point filter and I'll set it to equals index mod constant threshold int 32 0 and if it is 0, I'll do nothing to it. If it is 1, the outside filter, I'll transform points and increase it by 50, 50, and plug that into the static mesh spawner. And there we go. They're alternating heights. Let's now uh, get them into the proper alignment. So first, I will do their X alignment, which is on the spline sampler. Let's set the distance down to 50. Still too far, 25. Still a little too far, 20. That's actually a little too close, 21. Great, I'll stick with that. And let's lower them now. 50, let's try 25. Still too high, 20. Looks great. All right, now let's project it to the landscape. Right before the point filter, I'll add projection node. And this projection, I do not want to project rotations, just positions. And I will add a get landscape data node. And I can get height only, since I'm only projecting positions. And let's plug that on into the point filter. 
All right. That's looking fine, but these are not sticking to flat levels. They're just going up with the landscape, which makes sense. Let's fix that. After the projection node, I can round the position Z to conform to a grid of, let's see, we decided they were 20 high, so a grid of, a grid of 20. So I just have to divide position dot Z by create attribute 20. Drop that in there, hook the two point on up, and now if I inspect this, I see position dot Z is 96, 97, so now I just need to round that. I'll use a floor function instead of round, which is going to drop it down to the next lowest number. And if I inspect that, I see that it is now 96, 97, 98, etc. So now I just need to multiply it again by the same number. Hook it up. And where are my points? Force region. There we go. All right, so these points are conforming to a nice grid, but there are a couple problems. When they step up a level, they overlap instead of keeping their alternating up and down. So that means that every other one, the one that's on top, basically has to flip. So right here, in this point filter, this transform points node should be flipping between the inside filter and the outside filter based on the height. Now, I can add, after this floor function, another modulo. Mod 2 again. And if you remember how we had odd and even indexes, we have odd and even position.z's. So I can just mod position dot z and output will be height mod. Hook that up to the multiply and now since we changed what we're working on, the output is height mod, we need to change this input source on the multiply and explicitly say position dot z on it. But if I look at this and scroll over, height mod is 0 or 1. So point filter, I'll have to add two, one for the inside and one for the outside filter, but I'll make them each height mod. And now one of them needs to go into the transform points and the other does not. Let's just try plugging the inside filter of the first one in. And then because it's flip-flopped, the outside filter of the second one goes into the transform points. And let's hook this on up and see if it works. And there we go. It's looking good. You can see where it flips here, and it also flips right here. So we've got most of the stuff done with the floor. And if I hold Alt, I can bring it along. And here, now I can actually demonstrate why I suggested not to modify the splines Z. If you bring it down, the points rotate, but also the points are actually closer together. So even if you reset this rotation, they'll start to overlap over each other. And that overlap is the thing you're trying to avoid. So if I click back into the spline and the point, I can zero it out again. There we go. OK, so now we're just about done with the wall. I have to add one more thing. 
a create points grid. And for this, I'm going to set the grid extents to be half the cell size. That's going to give me a single point. And I want it to go up on the Z axis. And the extents is going to be sort of double what it would seem, because extents is kind of like the radius. So I'll start with something smaller, like 60. Cell size is going to be double that height we're offsetting by. So I'll set it to 40. Make sure you uncheck cull points outside volume and set it to either x, z, or y, z, so that the z axis actually works. And now we'll hook it up to a copy points. But we can't just hook it straight up to copy points. We need a merge node in here because the target only accepts a single point set. And now I can hook this copy points up to the static mesh spawner. And there we go. We can raise this up a little bit by setting the center position. So let's try 60. A little high. You can see that there's a gap here, so 50. And that looks a lot better. If we want to make it higher, we can set the extents up even farther. So let's say 100. And as we raise it, it goes lower down. So we can set the center position on up again, 90 in this case. And there we go. You have your wall. And just extend more points. It's already set up so it can go up hills because of the projection node. Have at it.